Hi, I'm Kat Graham with Humanity Road. We're one of many volunteer technical communities that converge online during disaster to help individuals create maps, solutions, and information to provide that information to the public when they need it most. We're here to talk to you today about social media. What is social media? Social media is where web-based and mobile technologies meet in the middle to provide interactive dialogue. This interactive dialogue takes place on many different social networking sites online. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube all become a chain of information during a disaster. Individuals who are impacted in the, in the impact zone start to mobilize and upload information that's valuable to first responders, the aid agencies, and others who need that information in an event. And you can be a part of that. Social media empowers the public to be a participant in an interactive way, and social media sites provides the platform for that information. Crowdsourcing is the platform that aggregates the data on social media. It allows the first responders to see this data in three-dimensional ways on a map, and it also empowers them to respond more effectively by staging resources, and they can stage it quicker. The faster that information is populated on the, on the map, the quicker they can get into the areas that are needed most. In social media, you can be a participant. In a survey last year done by the American Red Cross, the three things that are most frequently taken when someone leaves in the middle of a disaster are their cell, key, their cell phone, their keys, and money. Aid agencies and first responders and others who are just getting into the social media arena, it's important for you to understand that social media is not a fad. It's here to stay. On Facebook alone, there's 500 million users. On Twitter, there's 100 million users. On Twitter, 80% of those users are actually viewing that information on their mobile devices. And that's why these social platforms become the pulse point of what's happening in the middle of a disaster. Monitoring that information and listening to it during the event becomes something critical for the first responders and aid agencies and allowing the public to access information that they need on their mobile devices in a format that they can read is critical for them as well. When we look at social media and we go back to traditional media, radio grew to 50 million users in 38 years. TV grew to 50 million users in 13 years. In Facebook, they added 100 million users in nine months. Immediately following the earthquake in Japan, 500,000 new users were added to Twitter alone. If your community wants to become active in crowdsourcing, there are things you can do in advance. Monitor your online presence for your website. Make sure your information is up to date. As a community, you can also curate some of your information in advance and launch your own crowd, crowd map and hold a drill. There are some things that you should keep in mind in advance. You need to understand how it works. How does the map work? How do you engage with SMS? There's different ways to report the media. You can bring it in through SMS channels or email or Twitter. But research that now and understand how that works for your own community. Different individuals may be using different hashtags. Collecting that information can become a challenge. And even in a drill, people get it wrong. Officials might get it wrong, or your local uh, community, an individual might get it wrong. Practice patience. There are other tools online that can help you modify the tweet, such as Tweak the Tweet. There are tools that help you monitor the um, Facebook versus Twitter versus how many people are, are clicking on your links. So research social media and understand where you can go to get that information. In creating your map, one of the things that you need to understand are categories. When you create categories, you don't want to create too many. You need to understand what are your goals of the map. Do you have a chain for providing that information to the people on the ground for actionable information? They need actionable information, so make sure the categories is going to collect that information effectively. You can study other maps to see how they did it as well. Becoming a curator or becoming a participant, either way there are different guidances and things that you can do today to become prepared and more familiar with it. So when an event happens, what type of information should you collect? Well, you need to pay attention to the map that's being issued and the guidance that's being provided to you by your local government or your local officials who are helping in the disaster. 
So tune in, find out what it is they need, and then start providing it. Pieces of information that emerge and are critical may include infrastructure damage. Is there a bridge that collapsed? Is there a hospital that collapsed? What are th what's the status of the highway near you? Can you travel down the highway near you? Can you take a photograph and upload? What is the status? Do you see a problem of an infrastructure that you think people should be aware of? That's the type of information that you can upload the picture and geolocate it on the map. Make sure that you locate it properly because it's important that the disaster responders know where the impacts are. First responders and aid agencies mobilizing for the event use this information. It helps them. So being accurate curators of the event is important. Everyone wants to get it right. We know people get it wrong occasionally. So information that's being fed into the map gets checked and double checked. Sometimes it might not be able to be placed on the map until we can confirm it. So when you do create your record, make sure you provide contact information so that we can reach you. The objective of crowdsourcing is to save lives, so don't risk yours in curating the information. Do it from where you are and limit any unnecessary travel. Also, during an event, if you see more than one map emerge, combine forces. It will save resources and create a better solution. Not everyone gets it right. What's important is that you try and get familiar with the information and the technology today because the technology is here to stay and the actions that you take today could save someone's life. So if you're going to participate in the drill, read up, understand how to, understand what guidelines, and remember, if it is a test, make sure that you put that in your messages that this is only a test. So whether you're a first responder, an aid agency, or a participant, practice. Practice in the drill, because we need the practice. We need to, and we want to get it right. We're looking forward to a successful drill. We hope you have a successful drill. This is Kat Graham with Humanity Road. Driven by need, led by experience, but we're powered by volunteers. Thank you.